it's very important that you can predict how changing one species in an ecosystem would affect the others. This phrase here will help you remember how it works. In front does the same, behind does the opposite. So to understand what I mean by in front and behind, think of yourself standing on one of the, the words, one of the names of the organisms, and pointing in the same direction as the arrows. So in front of you would mean further down the food chain, and behind you would mean towards the beginning. So in this first food chain, let's say for example that something caused the lizard population to decline. So in front of the lizards are the snakes further down the food chain. They would also decline because they do the same. And that makes sense because if there were fewer lizards then the snakes would have less food. That would cause their population to decline. But behind the lizards are the insects. Now, since they're behind, they would do the opposite. That means their population would increase. And that also makes sense. If there are fewer lizards, then less insects are getting eaten, so more of them are surviving, and that would cause an increase in the population. Now, you may be wondering about the plants, and we can still use this phrase to figure it out. Behind does the opposite. Well, they're behind the insects. So, it's not that everything behind the lizards does exactly the same thing, you have to do this one at a time. So since the plants are behind the insects, they would do the opposite. They would decline. And that makes sense too. If there's more insects eating plants, then more plants will be eaten and that population will go down. So let's look at the second food chain. And let's say that the minnow population increased. Well, in front of the minnows are the perch. That would mean more food for the perch, so they would also increase. And if there's more perch, that would mean more food for the hawks. So that population would increase too. But behind the minnows are the zooplankton. So they would do the opposite. And that population would decrease. Since more minnows are eating more zooplankton, the zooplankton population would go down. But behind the zooplankton would do the opposite. Because since fewer zooplankton are there, they would eat less algae allowing the algae population to grow. So this same concept works with food webs. Let's say for example an insecticide caused a decrease in the cricket population. Well, in front of the crickets all of those organisms would do the same. So that means further down the food web. So the birds would possibly see a decrease, the lizards and the mice would all decrease because they would have fewer crickets to eat. But behind the crickets are the corn. The corn population could see an increase because there would be fewer crickets eating the corn. In our second food web, let's say that there is an increase in the snake population. Well, in front would do the same. More snakes means more food for hawks. So that would cause an increase in the hawk population. But more snakes would also mean more crickets being eaten so behind would do the opposite, and the cricket population would decrease. So let's look at a couple questions to make sure you understand. A virus has infected the frog population, causing a reduction in its size. How could this change affect the population of crickets and snakes? So the frog population is decreasing. Well, in front does the same. So the snake population would also decrease because they would have less food but behind does the opposite. So that cricket population, which is behind the frogs, would increase because there would be fewer frogs eating those crickets, so more crickets could survive. And so that tells me that the correct answer is A, because it says the crickets would increase and the snakes would decrease. Question two says, an insecticide has been sprayed in an area of this ecosystem, reducing the population of insects. How would this affect the grasses and the spiders? So I'm going to reduce the insect population. Well, in front does the same. So since the spiders are down the food chain from the insects, they would do the same. That population would also decrease because they'd have less food. But the grasses, which are behind the insects, would do the opposite. Fewer insects, 
would mean less things eating the grass. So the grass population would be allowed to increase. So that means the correct answer is A. The grasses would increase and the spiders would decrease. Question 3. Treatment with an herbicide has greatly reduced the amount of clover in this ecosystem. How would that affect the great horned owl population? So we're decreasing the clover. Well, you may have noticed that great horned owls don't directly eat clover. However, we can just follow the pattern all the way to the owls. So in front does the same. So I would expect the deer mouse population to decline. And the owls are in front of the deer mouse, so I would also expect the great horned owl population to decline. So that means the correct answer is B. Now, now this question illustrates a very important concept. Notice that no matter what path I went down, everything would be considered in front of the producer, the clover, which means it would all do the same. So that illustrates the point that if you destroy a producer population in an ecosystem, it has an effect on all of the organisms. And that's because producers are the foundation of every food web. And if you destroy the producers, then you destroy the entire food web. Question four, how would a reduction in the zooplankton population affect the hawkfish? So I'm reducing the zooplankton population. Notice that hawkfish don't directly eat the zooplankton. So I'll just keep going down the line. So the blenny are in front of the zooplankton, so they would also decrease and the hawkfish are in front of the blenny, so they would also decrease. So the correct answer is B. Now it's very important that you understand that all of these changes that we're talking about are the initial changes, what you would expect to immediately follow the first change. The relationship between predators and prey is one that's constantly going up and down. Now sometimes there is a change that's so severe that it has a long-term effect. If you completely wipe out a species or reduce it drastically, then there's a chance that that could have a very long-term and possibly permanent effect. But there is a natural increase and decrease between predators and prey, and they keep each other in balance. So what we're predicting is the initial response of the other population, but there would be this long-term cycle of increase-decrease that over time you'd be able to see.